uh, how do you load data into uh, Hadoop system? We talked about Scoop, which essentially help you interact with um, uh, relational systems like MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, and other things. You can import and export data from these relational systems using Scoop. Okay, and uh, using Flume, you can connect to more streaming internet data sources like Twitter, Facebook, or the click stream from produced from your web server and so on. Okay, and uh, apart from these two, there are also uh, Hadoop distributed copy commands which help you transfer data between multiple Hadoop clusters. Okay. And then once you have the data into your HDFS, you run these uh, uh, components like pig and hive to do some data pre-processing and data manipulations. Okay, this is something uh, you will see in one of uh, the LMS uh, sections, uh, which help you kind of uh, help you install Flume, help you install Hadoop and uh, let you connect to a Twitter streaming API and get the data, store it in HDFS and do some processing on it. Okay, what's the one big challenge that Hadoop is not able to handle when compared to RDBMS? Um, transaction semantics. Hadoop doesn't have transaction semantics, whereas RDBMS thrive on transaction semantics, right? Whenever I withdraw money, whenever I deposit some money into my bank account, I need strict transaction semantics. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to trust a bank with my money, right? Um, and when a file is, and, and uh, I think we covered on the first uh, class about uh, schema on read and schema on write, right? Which kind of, uh, 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 plays an important role in the sense that uh, in case of RDBMS, you need to have the scheme uh, ahead of time before you start putting any data into the system. Whereas in Hadoop, you dump everything that you have, okay? It's up to the application with whatever is using the data will read the data in appropriate format through this concept of input formats, okay? So you define the schema on read, not on write. Okay, that's another key, very, very important uh, uh, distinguishing uh, aspect between the two systems. Okay, so this is what we want to talk about. Okay, so this slide covers uh, essentially the aspects that we need to know about MapReduce uh, programming paradigm, right? As, as we told, MapReduce consists of mappers and reducers, right? So those are the key processing engines in the MapReduce job, okay? And let's see how does a MapReduce job uh, uh, runs. So obviously this MapReduce job should take some input, does some processing and produce some output, okay? So this is uh, like a hello world example of MapReduce, which is a word count. You have an input data file and you want to count uh, the occurrences of number of occurrences for each of the word. And the output that you produce is something like this. Okay, so the input data set is this and the output data that you produce is this, which is simply the number of occurrences of each of my word. Okay, and I want to do this in a parallel manner using MapReduce uh, functionality. Okay, so the first thing, what did we say? Whenever a client submits a job, we will go get all the metadata about the file regarding the number of blocks, number of uh, the size of the input and everything. And then we logically split this data set into uh, logically partition data set into splits. Okay. So though these are the splits that you get. Okay, so from this data set, we split it up into individual splits and in each of the split, your data is represented in the form of a key value pair. Okay, there's a key aspect and there's a value aspect. And there are many uh, input formats which uh, kind of tell you how to uh, 
define this key and value. A simplest uh, format is called as text input format. That means I am just reading my data line by line. Okay. So the key will be like a position in your file and the value will be the entire line, uh, entire text line that you read from your file. Okay. So, but the point that you need to know is by controlling the input format, you define how to read your data. Okay. This is what I meant by schema on read. You are defining the key and value, which is how you want to read the data at the time of uh, reading, not at the time of writing, unlike uh, database systems. Okay. So, once you logically partition your data into these splits and your data is organized as key value pairs as governed by input formats, on each of this input split, you apply your map function. Okay. So, this is a map function that you implement using your mapper process in Java. The, the way you implement that process is you assume that you get a key value pair from your input and this mapper function will tell you how to process that key value pair and then produce another list of key value pairs. Okay. So, that means it consumes a key value pair k1, v1 and it applies the map function and produces another list of key value pairs. So, it is a list of k2 v2. It may have a different key, different value, right? Or it can be the same. It does not matter. The mapper function will decide what this k2 v2 will be and how this k2 v2 are computed from my k1 v1, okay? That is the definition of mapper function. It takes a key value pair of the input it does some processing and produces a list of key value pairs. Okay. And in this particular case, the word count example. So, the way the mapper can uh, work is essentially it reads a line, it splits the line into individual words. Okay. And for each of the word, I am going to output a count called one. Okay, because that is the word that I have seen once. So, I read these three words as a single line, deer, bear and river. And so, this mapper function or mapper task uh, to be precise, this mapper task reads this k1 v1. Okay, k1 is some offset index in my file and v1 is this entire line. And the mapper function tells you that, uh, okay, I am going to read this data. I split this line into individual words, deer, bear and river. And I am going to output the counts 1, 1, 1 for each of this word, okay? So, my list of key value pairs will be this. My key is a string, consists of a word and my value is an integer, okay? So, and similarly, the same thing will be done on a different map task as well. So, the different map task will read a different input split, consists of a different uh, input line and then in this case car, car, river, okay. And I am dividing that into individual words, splitting that line into words and then I am outputting uh, counts one for each of this word, okay. So, the key value pairs that are produced by this mappers will be these key value pairs. Key is the word, value is the uh, count of one, okay? And similarly, the same thing is done by uh, the third task, okay? So, the key thing that you can observe here is the core functionality of the map. The core functionality is exactly the same across all the map tasks. It's just that that functionality is applied on a different uh, portion of the data, okay? And that's why each of this can run on a different machine in parallel simultaneously, okay? Now, the list of key value pairs produced by each mapper are then passed through something called as a shuffle phase, okay? Okay, so, uh, so yeah, our mappers are essentially outputting this list of key value pairs. And in the shuffling phase, 
it's pretty simple you simply sort by the key okay that means you want to bring all the values for a given key together into one uh, place okay so i have dir produced by mapper 1 and dir produced by mapper two, uh, 3 okay since they do they both have the same key i want to bring both of them together into uh, one place and say a single key dir and has multiple values uh, one produced here and one produced here so one comma one okay so essentially you're converting this list of key value pairs into key comma list of values okay it's pretty straightforward so you do that sorting and then uh, you get all the values associated to bear in one place all the values associated to car in one place deer river and so on okay and your reducer functionality will simply tells you how to reduce this list of key value uh, list of values into some aggregate okay and that's why it's called reduce because you're reducing the list of values associated with single key into another list of key value pairs okay and in case of word count it's simply count uh, adding up all these numbers okay i add one plus one so i get uh, the same key bear and the count two this is what i output from my reducer and in this case i am adding up all the three uh, counts so i get car comma three okay so that's essentially uh, a map reduce job you are starting with an input file you are splitting into some logical splits and you read this uh, data set uh, data splits as key value pairs and then each mapper will consume key value pair and produce a list of other key value pairs which can be same or different and then in the shuffling you bring all the values corresponding to a single key together in one place and then reduce functionality will uh, reduce the list of values associated with this particular key and then produce another set of list of key value pairs which will be the final output of your map reduce job okay now if you are in your map reduce world and if you want to do something let's say i just gave an example of uh, um, uh, aggregation right or uh, k-means clustering so linear regression also can be done but let's say k-means clustering if i want to do k-means clustering in map reduce i have to imagine how to arg organize my computation into my mappers and reducers okay if i want to do k-means um, on map reduce how would i do it so what is k-means again if you remember we have these uh, k cluster k centers and we want to compute the distances from each of my data point with all the k centers right so let's say um, somehow i gave k centers to all my mappers right in a distributed manner so each mapper has all the k centers now each mapper will get some partition of the data okay so I have the entire data set on which I want to do run k-means and my input formats, uh, my uh, logical splits are some partitions of my data. Okay. Now each mapper and the key value pair in that, key, uh, in that sense will be, key will be like a record ID and the value will be the entire record. Okay. And that's controlled by my uh, input format. Now the mapper has access to all the k-centers. Okay. Now it will read first key value pair, that means the first record, and then it computes all the k distances, okay, between that value and all the k centers. And then I can um, uh, output my uh, results, which are the distances between those k centers, and there my key can be the, uh, the center, ID of the center, and the value can be the distance okay and um, uh, and also probably i need to output the data point in order to compute the new centroid and similarly that's done by all the mappers okay now through the shuffling i get basically all the distances associated with a single center okay and also the points uh, to which it belongs to 
and reducer can do this minimum uh, computation essentially to figure out uh, what is the closest center and how do you compute the uh, new centroid okay uh, I, i'm giving you a very high level uh, algorithm but i hope uh, it clears